every Tuesday on David Zublick's platform, The Dark Outpost, we have been starting our investigation into the heretical and banned books of the Bible. And in order for us to go back and truly understand what these books are saying and why they were banned or labeled as heresy, we have to first and foremost understand who the original Christians were and what they believed. So today we're going to be recapping what we spoke about yesterday on the Dark Outpost for those of you who are not on the Dark Outpost. And as we spoke about previously with the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Essenes, the original Christians, their beliefs might surprise you. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. I also want to again thank all our patrons. If you would like to join our Patreon and help support this channel, there are links down below. Again, a special shout out to Tiffany Monroe, our producer. She is a Reiki master. If you would like more information on Tiffany, we have a link to her video down below as well as a copy of her email address. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today we're going to be talking about the Gnostics and the Cathars. Our study of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Essenes that it is believed the very first Christians were the Essenes or the Sons of Light. Again, this was the group of people who lived in Qumran by the Dead Sea who wrote, wrote the infamous Dead Sea Scrolls. We also know that after the Jewish war in the first century, a lot of the Essenes were wiped out. The few who remained then scattered. Well, these weren't the only people who scattered. The apostles, after the death of Jesus, also scattered. His apostles knew that if they hung around, they too would probably end up executed. Now we do know that a lot of the apostles were eventually executed. But what happened? What happened between leaving Israel and going out into the world? How did they spread the Christian faith? What did they teach? And were the Gospels that were banned from the Bible by Constantine really heresy? Before the Council of Nicaea, before Constantine decided to make Christianity the Roman religion, the faith of Christianity wasn't a dogmatic faith. Yes, it was an extension of the Jewish faith, as we spoke about in our episode on the Essenes. However, there was not a whole lot of structure to it. You see, each disciple, each apostle went out into the world and taught people from their own experiences. We know that a lot of the apostles did not know how to read or write. Therefore, the gospels that were written were probably not written by them and were most likely written by one of their students. Before Constantine's reign, before the Council of Nicaea, before Christianity was even legalized, when it was an illegal religion or, or faith, there were about 50 different Gospels. This means that before the Council of Nicaea, there were about 50 or more Christian schools. Now, these schools were ran like the Essenes. It was very much a practice of self-accountability, of, of going to God within yourself, which was a lot of what Jesus spoke about. We know, again, the Essenes did this. The Essenes meditated and practiced astrology and prophesied. This was also very much like the original Christian schools. In fact, if we look at the original Christian schools before the formation of the first church, it's a 100% evolution from the Essenes into what would be more like mystery or mystical schools. The original Christian faith was extremely mystical. And as one professor said that I absolutely loved, it was like the Christian faith during this time was buck wild. It was just different schools and everybody kind of followed their own teacher. Whatever apostle that was, whatever student of that said apostle was, that's what they practiced. This shows us that the very original roots of Christianity were founded in an esoteric community called the Gnostics. 
In fact, the root word of gnosis means a personal experience, a personal knowing of the divine through your very own personal mystical experiences as well. They thought that the person's individual relationship with God trumped that of any type of temple or synagogue or religious center. In saying that, they also believe that there should be no leadership. Of course, they had their teachers, but each person was again personally responsible for their own experience. Of course, this is mimicked after the teachings of Jesus. Even in the four approved gospels that we have, we see this very clearly. The Gnostics also believed there was a battle going on between two forces. We see this played out in the War Scroll as well from the Essenes with the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness. Well, you see, the Gnostics believed that the Supreme God was the key to salvation and that the lesser God, the fallen God, was the force of darkness that was responsible for all of the illusions in our world. They believed that this lesser God was part of the reason that we were separated from the Supreme God or the Almighty God. This makes perfect sense to me. Again, this is the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness. This is also the story of Lucifer. We know that Lucifer was created by Almighty God and in the very beginning, he fell from grace because he challenged God by wanting to rewrite the script. Ever since then, according to the Old Testament or the Torah, all the Abrahamic faiths, there has been this constant battle going on between the two for the souls of mankind. And according to the early Christians, your salvation was dependent upon your connection to, again, the supreme God, almighty God. Therefore, they tried to pull themselves away as much as they could from the material world so they wouldn't be distracted by illusion, that they could just focus on that personal connection to God. Now, out of all the 50 Gospels that were around at that time, again, only four of them were approved by Constantine for the official Bible. Of course, these are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And even though these four Gospels are important as well, they're very different from the other 46 Gospels because the other 46 Gospels, like the Book of Thomas or the Gospel of Mary, really go into great detail regarding this personal mysticism or salvation with the Almighty God. It's pretty easy when we step back and look at the full picture why Constantine labeled all the other 46 Gospels as heresy. If you allow people to have individual sovereignty and individual freedom over their own salvation, well, you, you can't control them at that point. So Constantine picked these four Gospels that are in the Bible as the Gospels that were the only correct Gospels because they were the easiest to manipulate. This Christian faith in its true form was a complete threat to the power of the Roman Empire. It was a complete threat to the authority of all these Canaanite rulers. So for this episode, I'm not going to go back into detail over Constantine and the Council of Nicaea, but I will link that video down below if you have not seen it or you want a refresher into what really happened with Constantine. But I will remind you at this point that for the original Christians, all the moves that Constantine make to solidify this Christian faith into a dogmatic structured faith really upset and angered the original Christians of the day. They weren't stupid. They knew that what Constantine was doing was wrong and he was basically taking their salvation away from them or the tools to learn their salvation away from them. He had taken this pure faith taught by Jesus Jesus and turned it into something Mithraic or Satanic. Well, basically all of these original Christian schools after the Council of Nicaea, after all this happened, pretty much proverbially gave Constantine the middle finger. And they kept studying all the gospels that had been banned as heresy with no real reason for them being heresy other than the fact that it brought people to salvation and the government would eventually lose control. So again, the Christian faith at this point is now a state-run religion. And again, the original Christians were having none of this. This, of course, infuriated the Roman emperor. 
And by 367 AD, they demanded that all these other 46 gospels that had been banned as heresy be burned and destroyed. But people didn't listen. They just kept reading these gospels and teaching them. So by 382 AD, the Roman Empire upped its ante. Not only did it remind its citizens that these other gospels were complete heresy and practicing any form of faith that led to your individual salvation and wasn't subservient to the state was illegal, but that they got caught with any of these other gospels or teaching from any of these other gospels, they would be burned at the stake. At this point, a, a bunch of monks who were Christians in Egypt decided to, instead of burn these books, hide them like their ancestors, the Essenes, had done. And for hundreds and hundreds of years, humanity thought that we had lost all these original Gospels. We knew they existed. We knew there was a Book of Thomas. We knew there was a Gospel of Mary because people wrote about them but we just didn't have copies of them. It was our understanding that they had all been burned and destroyed until 1945, two years prior to the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Nag Hammadi Library was found, not in Israel, but again in Egypt, where all these Christian monks so many years ago hid the gospels that they knew shared the true teachings of Jesus. And just like the Essenes, they hid them with the hope that one day we would find them. But although people might think the Gnostics or the true Christian church died out with Constantine and the Church of Rome, there was one group that kept this Gnosticism going into the Middle Ages. These were the Cathars. The Cathars lived in the south of France and their apostle, their teacher, was none other than Mary Magdalene. Yes, that's right. Mary Magdalene was an apostle of Jesus. She could have been his wife. I, I don't know. What I do know, though, is she was not a prostitute. I think most Christians are aware of that now, that Mary Magdalene did not ever work in the sex industry. In fact, Mary Magdalene was, out of all the apostles, one of the only ones who was educated, who could read and write. In fact, she spoke both Greek and Latin. Therefore, she was very trusted by Jesus himself. After Jesus' death, when all the apostles scattered and got out of Israel, Mary herself went to the south of France. Now, as all the other apostles were martyred and executed for teaching their faith, Mary was left alone to spread the teachings in what was then Gaul. In fact, it is believed that Mary was the only apostle, or maybe one of few apostles, who lived a long life and died of old age. And the Cathars in this area of the south of France was left undisturbed from the Roman Catholic Church until the Middle Ages. And by the 11th century, the Cathar faith, the Gnostic faith, the original Christian teachings, was flourishing. Of course, this became quite a horrible problem for the Pope and for the King of France, because you see, by the Cathars being in the south of France and being so popular, being so liked, it took power away from the Emperor as well as the Pope. In fact, many of the priests down in France that basically were employed by the Catholic Church at that time wrote in their journals that they believed the, the Cathars were the only true Christians and were the only people really on the true path. And you see, the Cathars called themselves Christians. They called themselves Christians as a way to separate themselves from the Catholics. And you see, it's really easy to understand why they flourished. During this time, all the Catholic services were done in Latin. Most of the people did not speak Latin. The Catholic Church became nothing more than a place of laws and fines. There was nothing holy or godlike within the Catholic Church for the common man. And as human beings, we often hunger for that connection to the source, to our Heavenly Father, to Almighty God. The Cathars, the Gnostics, the Christians offer the people an easy solution. 
that your connection to God is up to you. And Jesus spoke of love, to be in servitude to other people, to always live in an act of love. Well, this growing popularity, again, was quite a threat to the powers that be. So in 1209, Pope Innocent III and King Philip IV of France launched a crusade against the Cathars. They started their crusade on the 22nd of July, again in 1209, because that is the feast day of Mary Magdalene. We know the Catholic Church are a bunch of assholes who aren't Christians at all, but m mostly Mithraic, Satanic Canaanites. But you gotta be a super asshole to go and murder people on the day of their teacher's feast. I don't really wanna get into the gory details of the Inquisition. Most people already know what happened during the Inquisition. It was not a good time in our humanity. It was basically in total 600 years of pure terror. Terror that Jesus or any Christian would never inflict on anybody else. So I don't really understand why people are still Catholics to this day because their church is not that of Jesus. It's actions speak louder than words. Well, after the first crusade in 1209, some of the Cathars escaped, went into the Pyrenees, into, into Spain. And then in 1244, they had another massacre of the Cathars. Most of them were taken out at this time, but again, a few escaped with their teaching. But alas, in 1321, the last remaining Cathar was executed, was burned at the stake. Before he was executed, he did tell the world about a prophecy, a prophecy that the, the Cathars themselves knew, one that had been prophesied in 1244 at the last crusade. In this prophecy, he said that the Cathars would be back in 700 years. Again, this was 1321. So 700 years makes 2021. And the prophecy goes as follows. It has no fabric, only understanding. It has no membership, save those who know they belong. It has no rivals because it is non-competitive. It has no ambition. It seeks only to serve. It knows no boundaries. It's not of itself because it seeks to enrich all groups and religions. It acknowledges all great teachers of all ages who have shown the truth of love. Those who participate practice the truth of love in all of their beings. There is no walk of life or nationality that is a barrier. Those who are, know. It seeks not to teach, but to be, and by being enriched. It recognizes the whole planet as a being of which we are a part. It recognizes that the time has come for the supreme transmutation the ultimate alchemic act of conscious change of the ego into a voluntary return to the whole. It does not proclaim itself as a loud voice, but as a subtle realms of loving. It salutes all those in the past who have blazed the path, but have paid the price. It admits no hierarchy or structure, for no one is greater than another. Its members shall know each other by their deeds and being and by their eyes and by no outward sign, save the fraternal embrace. Each one will dedicate their life to the silent loving of their neighbor and environment and the planet while carrying out their task, however exalted or humble. It recognized the supremacy of the great idea, which may also be accomplished if the human race practices the supremacy of love. It has no reward to offer either here or in the hereafter, save the inevitable joy of being and loving. Each shall seek to advance the cause of understanding, doing good by sleep and teaching only by example. They shall heal, heal their neighbor, their community and our planet. They shall know no fear and feel no shame and their witness shall prevail over all odds. It has no secret, no intention, same that of a true understanding of the power of love and that if we want to be so, the world will change only if we change our self first. And all those who belong, belong. They belong to the church of love. It's a pretty powerful prophecy for the coming year of 2021. It does fit into the war scroll that we talked about last week. 
about at the end of this battle between darkness and light, there will be only light left where people will live in a golden age. We know that we're coming into the age of Aquarius. The prophecies seem to be fulfilling themselves. And at last, the true teachings of Jesus are coming to fruition. Now there's one other thing about Mary Magdalene. As I said, she was one of the only apostles who had an education, who could read and write. And again, regardless of whether she was Jesus' wife or not, who knows, he did rely on her for a lot of things. He told her things that he didn't tell other people. Well, it is believed that Jesus himself also knew how to read and to write. Of course he did. He turned water into wine. Reading and writing was no big deal for him. Well, did you know that it is believed that Jesus also wrote his own gospel? A gospel that was banned as heresy by the church. It is believed that Mary Magdalene was in possession of Jesus' gospel, and this was called the Book of Love. Now, many people believe the Book of Love has been destroyed over the years, but others believe that it still is hidden somewhere either in the south of France or in the Pyrenees. Now, next week, we will be going into the book of Thomas. It's the first book we're gonna dive into in our list, our long, long, long list of banned books that have been banned by the Vatican. Of course, yesterday on David's channel, we went into way more detail than I just gave you. This episode today was just kind of the Cliff Notes version of, of the Gnostics and the Cathars. Obviously, I ask each person to do their own research. And for those of you who are still struggling with the fact that you maybe believe or have been taught that these books are heresy or that the Gnostics and the Cathars are heretical groups, I ask you one thing. Why do you believe this? Do you believe they're heretics because somebody told you they were? You see, the Pope has no authority over you. Your priest has no authority over you. This is not just my beliefs as a Protestant. This is actually in the four Gospels that are in our Bible. Jesus is very clear that our relationship with God is between us and God. When you were born, God anointed you with consciousness. This consciousness was your lifeline to him. If God had planned on anybody else being involved in your relationship with God, he would have given the anointing of your consciousness to a man to anoint you with, like your priest or your pastor, but he didn't. He gave it to you himself. So I would ask everyone from the bottom of my heart, do not allow any human being to come in between you and God. I would ask that each person listen to these, this information on these banned books and do with it what you will. Pray about it, reflect on it. You see, the Catholic Church has lied to us a lot. We know Mary Magdalene, for example, wasn't a prostitute. They lied about that. If they lied about that, what else have they lied about? Why did they want to smear Mary Magdalene so much? Is it because they didn't want people reading her gospel? In my personal opinion, the Vatican, the Pope, a bunch of Protestant preachers are all wolves in sheep's clothing. I don't know, maybe myself, maybe I am more of a Gnostic, but I know that any type of valuable relationship that I've had with God has been moments that are between God and me and no one else. And as I've dug deeper into the early Christians, as I've looked at the Essenes, the Dead Sea Scrolls, started to look into these banned books, I see nothing but peace and love, endless love that human beings cannot understand. When I look at the churches, I see nothing but inquisition, blood, shame, fear-mongering, threats. I don't see love. So in my personal faith, in my personal walk with God, I am going to embrace what I learned from these books. I think the original Christians were really cool. I think they understood something that has been stripped away from us. And as we learned last week in the battle of sons of light and sons of darkness, I think this stripping away, this unknowing was done intentionally. But now is our time. As we move into the age of Aquarius, as we see the star of Bethlehem again on the 21st of December, as the sons of darkness are no more. Now we have that freedom, that liberation again, to go back to the basics, to understand that our relationship with God happens here within us, not out there.
and that it really is all just about love. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. Once again, I will link all of our videos that we've done as catch up videos for the Dark Outpost down below so you can go and watch all of those. I think I am gonna create a new playlist, a playlist of like Dark Outpost stuff so you guys can like Go through the playlist in the future if you want to, if you want to review some stuff, some cliff notes of what we talk about with David. Of course, over on David's channel, I run it or we run it differently than here. Here it's just me, so it's more like storytelling. We're over there. We're able to kind of dig through the information and banter and talk about it, and we can take in questions from viewers, and it's more of like a group effort. So if you want to go over to the Dark Outpost and watch us on Tuesdays there, I'll put a link to that below. Otherwise, I'll be catching you here on my channel. On Friday, we're gonna go back to Scotland for another story based in Scotland. I'm having so much fun studying the Scottish folklore. After Friday, we're probably gonna depart from Scotland for a little bit to do some Christmas stuff. Um, I hope to go back though and do more stories from Scotland because I'm really, really enjoying the Highlands and all these crazy um, mystical stories and folklore. It's super cool and I really hope I get to go visit Scotland again once once our world is back in balance. Next week I'm going to try to do more videos than just the three we typically do. I'm going to try to have some fun with the holiday season. I'm considering doing a live this weekend. Again, I got to figure all that out. I think I might need to get a moderator. So if anybody's interested in potentially moderating the chat, then let me know in the comments below. Um, I thought I could possibly do it myself, but with a live, I want to be able to read everybody's questions and comments because I feel like that's the beauty of a live is that we're all kind of talking about stuff together. Um, but I've been watching other people do it and the questions go so fast that I don't know if I would be able to continue the topic of conversation and catch all the questions. So I might have to have some moderation. So again, if that's something you've had experience with if, or you're interested in helping me with, then just let me know down in the comments and I would greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, again, next week I am hoping to do some more Christmas stories, some stuff like that, just to have fun for our holidays. I also want to say Happy Hanukkah to all the people who are celebrating Hanukkah right now. I believe it's like maybe towards the end. I'm not 100% sure. I'm filming this earlier than the day it's, it's airing, so I'm not really sure what night we're on, but I, I bless you this Hanukkah, and I hope that you're having a wonderful celebration with your family. I'm hoping next year in 2021, my goal is to incorporate some of these Jewish holidays into my year, like Passover and Hanukkah, all that stuff. That's kind of my resolution for 2021. And for those of us who celebrate Christmas, again, get ready guys, this Christmas is gonna be awesome. And again, we're gonna have fun next week as we build up to it. All right, guys, I once again have a wonderful day. Thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music if you would like to purchase the song down below. And thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out there. All right, guys, I will see you on Friday. Bye.